Uh, hello, this is a note about a new feature of uh, QTVLM, and uh, if you're checking it right this moment, then you may need to get a beta. If you look here, I'm using 5.11-2 beta 8, so probably in, it'll be working this way in the next full build, but this is... The, I, it works this way in the beta. And this is about, this is for our friends in the United Kingdom. And we have uh, forecast zones in the U.S., and we have a, a discussion of that in our textbook and so forth. But in the U.K., they have a, a very famous set of uh, uh, maritime forecasts They're called the shipping forecast. It's a, it's a fundamental part of uh, marine life in the U.K., and in fact, in the uh, in the public life, uh, it's, it, the, the, the forecasts are broadcast on the BBC. I think you can listen to them live if you like. So, uh, and, and, but they, there, there's a special format to this, and so I want to explain this. But for our friends in the sailing in UK or anyone sailing in the UK waters here, these shipping forecasts are are fundamental. And so we now have a way to present them in the QTVLM, and uh, at this, and then just click them to, to read the actual, to read the actual reports. And I'm going to put a link in the uh, discussion. Uh, the, yeah, I guess it's description that shows you where you download the shape files. So um, let is let let me just look at this here. Let me get the link and just show you this process. Here is the link, and let me get a browser up here with a tab, and then I'm gonna do Command V and Enter. And so I'm gonna just save those to the downloads. Okay, so you use that link, and it'll, it'll save them to your downloads. Okay, so once they're in your downloads, then you get this zipped file. So depending, I'm on a Mac um, or PC does this a little bit differently, but you see that's a shape, UK shipping forecast shape files zip, and you double click that. Now in a Mac, that just bang opens it and it puts it here, you know. So I have those, and, and what the folder of files looks like is it's about five or six files here that make this all work. And you only have to do this once, basically. We're just preparing the program. We're getting this, this feature added to the program, and then it's permanent after that. And so um, I would do this then. Let me open another uh, command N. Just for tidiness here, I would, we, we, we recommend for the QTVLM that you have a, a special folder where you keep all of your data, your harmonics for the currents and so forth, and various pictures and uh, other other things. You could put your grib files in there and so forth. And then, so what I would do is once you get that, I would just, actually, it looks like I've done it. UK shipping, yeah, I've done it. Uh, oh, why did it go in twice? Um, uh, UK, oh, okay, because I didn't put it, okay. I didn't put it in, the, okay, let me delete that. That's just silly. Delete, right, okay. Hang on just a minute while I stumble through this. Delete, move to trash. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, here's the one. It should really go in this shape files here. So what you would do is drag it and put it into here. And I put it in the wrong place, but then again, I already I already had it there. So there there's there's a there's a folder we want in in inside of the my my shape files. Okay. So now we have this data where we want it. And so now the process is uh, how, do you, how do we activate it and then how do we use it? So here's the program. Then you would go up to, um, I'm in a Mac, so the, the menu bar, a little awkward in a Mac, the menu bar is up here on the top and I can actually move the program away from the menu bar, but Mac users are used to that. And so, uh, so you wanna hit view and then view shape files, open a shape file. Now, then we browse, then you browse. Now, I'll show you in a moment. And so we're gonna go to my QTVLM data, my shape files, UK shipping reports, and then the one you've gotta pick, and it looks like it knows that, and it's a SHP. So you click that and you say open. So that loaded all the shape files right there. 
But I would, I would also do a trick here. First of all, I just check this. I would say, okay, let's just see if they work. So I'm going to just roll my mouse over here, and it says that's an area called Southeast Iceland. And then I double click it, and there's the shape. There's the, there's the report, which I'm going to talk about. Okay, so that all works. And that all works. So what I'm going to do, just a belt and suspenders here, uh, what we want to do is I'm just going to exit this, exit this program, and then I'm going to open it again. That will save everything. And um, uh, then I can come back here, a QT VLM um, view. What is it? Shape files. Open a shape file. And so it remembers that and it's there. Now I can close it the way that you would get rid of this when you're done using it and you don't want it to show up. Well, there, I just closed it there. But there's also, you can erase it out of your uh, memory there with um, close a shape file. But right now, let's just open it. Okay. So that is the, and then you want, when you do this, you want, there's two fields to this. There's a, there's this the star path link. We have the, we actually made some custom shape file to make this thing work. So this thing called SP link is just a link where it goes to our server to get the data from UK. We're going to the UK and getting it, but we're trying to make it inter integrate with, uh, with a QTVLM. But we want to show the name. So you put the name and that's it. And then you say, OK, you're done. Now, before we do this, let me back up just a minute. And I'll put this link in there, too. But you're going to want to go to, uh, go to the, uh, uh, well, let's see. Actually, what you want to get is the, um, where is it here? Let me just see if it's, yes, here. This is a fact sheet. This is, you get, and I'll put this link in there. This is a fact sheet from the Met Office in the, Met Office in the UK. And this is all about the shipping forecast. And so this is a critical document to read through. Now, if you're a, a British mariner, uh, you'll know this all by heart. But if you're going there for the first time or planning a trip there, then you have to read about this. And uh, the thing about it is, first of all, here are the various areas. And we're going to see them and interact with them directly here. These are forecast zones. Now, in the US, we don't use these names. We use like Z123, Z124, you know, stuff like that. But the names are really nice. It's a, it's a nice way to do it. Canada uses names like this. UK doesn't yet. They should. And then, then this document will then show the coordinates where every one of these things are located. And then the names of them and some hint on why the names are what they are. But then you get to the really important part, and that's their special terms. The one thing that's, uh, there's a couple things special about it. We have to know these terms that they use if you want to understand the forecast. But the main thing is they're using the Beaufort force number for winds. So you have to know the Beaufort force. We in the U.S. don't use that that much, but I, in a, certainly in the U.K. they use it a lot, and maybe in parts of Europe, I'm not sure. But, um, but uh, we don't use it in the U.S., so this will be, you have to get used to that. And then so we have this article here, and let me get it back here. Um, this article here, and I've got links to all of this in the description. And this is where you're going to see that Beaufort 1 is uh, 1 to 3 knots, 2 is 4 to 6, 3, 7 to 10, and so forth. The, and the reason that's important is even this, this fundamental document that's telling us how to use this, they just assume you know the Beaufort scale, so they're only defining the Beaufort scale for these gale force winds, force 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so you go through here and you learn what they mean by eminent, soon, later, very poor, poor, you know, defines this. So this is a key to understanding those forecasts. And we have other ways to, uh, other ways to study this, okay? Because here now, now we can go up here, I put my mouse on, I just, it's a, it's a tool tip, so I just slide my mouse on there, and as soon as that shows, I can, oh, I got to double click it. I got to do what it says, double click it. Okay, and that shows that report. Now, this one has a gale forecast, a gale forecast at 1,500. Let me mention something here. Uh, these shipping forecasts are issued 
basically for the Synoptic Times, 0, 6, 12, 18, Zulu. They come out one hour before the Synoptic Times, and their forecast period is one day, 24 hours. So these are like 24-hour forecasts. So when they say northern, well, this one doesn't say anything. Um, it doesn't imply a change. It just tells you what it is. But the thing I want to notice, this is 18 Zulu stuff we're looking at now, 18 Zulu. And notice that the, the actual gale warning came out earlier, came out earlier on this one. So we come down like here, Biscay, uh, here. Uh, what's this? Oh, look at this. <laughs> we see this in Puget Sound a lot. It says the wind is variable two to four. Now two to four, let's come back here. That's four to six knots and that's 11 to 16. So that means the wind speed they're forecasting is anywhere between four and 16. And what's its direction? Variable. What that means is they don't know what the wind's gonna do, period. But it's gonna be fair. That's important and the visibility is good. But don't know what the wind is, frankly. All right, but that's what these uh, forecasts do. And you can see here's northwest three to five veering north. And what so that means over a 24 hour period it's doing this. The sea state moderate or rough. And then you have to bounce right back into that table to find out what does moderate or rough mean in terms of meters or feet, you know, and so forth like that. So that's what that's doing. But we have a more interesting, more, well, what I think more interesting things we can do. We can load, let me, you see, I have loaded in the background here two uh, numerical forecasts, one from the U European Union, ECMWF, I've got their wind and pressure, and I've got the GFS wind and pressure for this area. So we look at, if we turn this on, we can then look at, um, look at the forecast in the area where they say, like in this area, let's see, what time is it? Now, this is 18 Zulu. So I, well, let me get tuned in here. I know that the most recent uh, forecast was 18 Zulu. So that's there. So now we're looking at, let's see, 18 Zulu. So this is 18 Zulu right here for this, uh, this is called Iceland up here. And so, and that's a strong, very strong winds right now. But you can then right click this and do a meteogram, a meteogram. Actually, we can do more of a trick. We can compare gribs. So we look at that and it looks like the wind speed, one of these is a, uh, the first, the blue, green one is a ECMWF, that's a green, and the red one is a GFS. So these guys are basically agreeing both in wind speed and wind direction. And then you can look at also the waves. Oh, the waves. Ah, no, I, the waves, I'm going to have to load the GFS for the waves. The pressure, yeah, let me, let me load the, uh, oh, I got to, actually, let me just turn them both on. Okay, turn them both on. Oh, this is red and red. You can't see that. But so in this area, you see these are the two forecasts, and you can compare these. But then you go in here, and you can, I can do this. Let me double click. I've got that forecast. And then you go in here, and you can write, okay. So you see four to six becoming northerly. Cyclonic, now that's a term they use. You have to read that in the, uh, in the definitions, what they mean by that. And becoming north to northeast, rough or very rough, okay. But now we can actually look here and see what their numerical models say by hit, hit a meteogram and then compare. So you see, look at that. Even though these are pretty monster changes in the wind speed over this period, starting at 18 Zulu, they do, the two numerical models from the US and the EU, they agree very well. Now we can look at the waves and you see what the waves are. The waves have a big shift in the direction in that, in that area right here that we're talking about right here. And then what's, what do we see for the pressure? The two pressure forecasts agree very well. All right, so that's what you can do. Once you have these forecasts up, let me close this. Once you have these forecasts up here, then you can go into any zone and uh, like here, and then uh, just oh, out here, put your mouse over it. When it shows, double click it and you get the, you get the shipping forecast. It's just another really nice feature of uh, uh, QTVLM uh, that we can do.
And so I'll leave that for now.